Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And this week, I saw some news that I almost could not believe. After many delays and after a long period that people just thought that the project was completely dead, the Iron Blooded Orphans G application finally came to life on November the 15th, both on Android and on iOS. The game will allow you to play through the main Iron Blooded Orphan storyline with turn based combat, but the two biggest draws of the game will be the side stories, focusing on the various characters that we already know and love, and the new Order Hunt story, of which the first part of the first episode is ready to be played. And it seems like we'll be getting two story updates every month. Also, as with most gacha games, they're celebrating the launch with a bunch of special gacha events like double SSR raids, a Gundam Hajiroboshi and Wistario pickup gacha, various sales, and a 3000 rare metal and 10 mobile suit gacha ticket first login reward. And to celebrate the occasion, I built the high grade Sigrun, a very Gyan esque mobile suit that will be appearing in the game. The Valkyria frame that it uses makes it surprisingly sturdy for an IBO kit, and the rest also does this kit justice. Whether it's the sharply molded face, the cool round shield, or those extra hands for dynamic poses with the rapier. Just paint that thing actual gold, and it's perfect. And this kit was provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hubbling Japan, where you can also pick one up for yourself. Links to the Sigrun and much more down below. And if you need some more things to buy, if you're a fan of the game's music, you'll be able to buy the original soundtracks on two CDs on January the 25th. It'll retail for 3,850 yen, 28 US, and comes with a total of 40 tracks. And one day later, we got the profile for one of the new Iron Blooded Orphans MSV machines that appears in the game. The Gundam Gamogen, um, a Gundam that is owned by the Falk family, or the Falk fam family, um, one of the seven stars, and it uses a very interesting weapons loadout. A 110mm six-barreled Gatling gun, and a revolver gun axe. Now, I know that gun axes are an actual thing, um, like actual weapons that were used in the past, um, but a revolver gun axe is definitely quite out there. Also, in the game, he doesn't even hit the enemy with the slicey bit that you can see on it. Um, but with the revolver bit. So, practically speaking, it isn't even really an axe, it's more of a hammer that also has the ability to put a bullet into the enemy after it already squished the enemy. Because why not? And on the Gumpla front, we also got some really exciting news. Uh, yesterday, the Master Great Stark Jagen went up for pre-order over at P Bandai, and for 7,480 yen, 54 US, this beauty can be yours in March, uh, February. Um, it is of course based on the Master Great Jagen D type, but does come with a lot of new parts as well including the arm armor that now actually opens up to reveal the beam sabers on the right on the right arm and the grenades on the left arm. Then there's two missile launchers, a hyper bazooka, a beam rifle and a slide of water slide decals. And as you would expect, it didn't take long for this beast of a mobile suit to be completely sold out. But fear not, there is always the chance of an extra wave of pre-orders. Something that happened this week with the high-grade dagger, and this time, I was able to secure my squad of three. Also, um, with all of the main Earth Alliance machines out of the way, I wonder what's going to be next. Like, clearly it's gonna be something from Zaft, so... Are we going to get like a remake of the Jin, 
or are we finally going to get a decent Din or Gwaze? Personally, I'm really hoping for the Gwaze because that means that we could then potentially get a Gwaze R, one of the most underrated mobile suits in my opinion. And the second new announcement that we got was the F-90 Mission Pack C-Type and T-Type. The twin set uh, went up for pre-order on the 14th and is slated for a February release, making it perfect for the winter sports season. <laughs> and goes for 2420 yen, 18 US. Uh, this set does not include the base F-90, but it does include literal skis and a cloak to allow your F-90 to enjoy some winter sports. Because the C stands for coldness, and coldness obviously means skiing. And the other things are heaters that attach to the legs and the shoulders. Uh, the T then stands for tracer, and this thing I really like. The booster-like backpack is a bit more meh, but I am totally in love with those shield boosters that connect to the shoulders. They are very reminiscent of the Hazel series' shield boosters and especially those of the Gapland. Not only is their shape similar, but they also have what looks like a twin beam rifle installed in each. And if you want a dedicated display base for all of your leftover F90 packs, because you basically gotta buy them in twin packs, on the same day, pre-orders open for the Master Grade F90 Mission Pack Hangar Twin Set uh, for 1650 n 12 US. And just like the C and the T-Type Pack, this set is a P Bandai exclusive and currently slated for a February release. And since we're on the topic of limited kits, over at the Gundam base, sales have begun for the real great RX-93 FF New Gundam, the entry grade RX-93 FF New Gundam, the BB Senshi RX-93 FF New Gundam, the high grade New Gundam Booster Bed, the Jagan, the high grade Jagan Axis Shock Image Color version, the Rigazi Dummy Balloon, and the New Gundam Dummy Balloons. On to the Witch from Mercury news then, and unfortunately we're starting off with a bit of a downer. On Monday it was revealed that Yume Miyamoto, Nika Nanaura's voice actress, is suffering from undisclosed health problems and is going on a small hiatus because of them. According to her agency, she'll prioritize getting treatment, but she will also continue to work to some extent, so it's not certain how this will affect Witch from Mercury, if it will affect the series at all. And talking about Nika, um, new setting images of Suleta and Gyul in their piloting uniforms and Nika in her work uniform have been added to both the English and Japanese G Witch website, with the Japanese version also receiving two new words in the glossary. The first is Enhanced Human, a human whose body has been modified through nanotechnology to better tolerate the gunned arm system. The selection process was based on high resistance to the data storms caused by the gun format, leading to enhanced humans being able to achieve and maintain higher permit scores. And the second word was Kuribari, or however they'll decide to romanize the name of this very gun tank-esque mobile suit. They're the machines that fought Elon 3 on 1 and lost, and we got some of their specs. The model number is BTZ48, head height is 17.9 meters, and their weight is 88.6 tons. Next up, as you're all aware, we did not get a new episode, but a recap instead, and as part of this recap, Gundam.info released a relationship chart of the main characters, but I personally feel like there's quite some relationships missing. Uh, there's no arrows from Gyul, Elon Sh or Shadik to Soleta, Gyul's groupies are missing, the Ariel is missing, there's nothing about the relationship between Choo Choo's fists and the Spatians, and they say nothing about Cecilia's love for sarcasm. 
What was really cool though, was that this week we also got a Japanese audio version of Cradle Planet, read by Kana Ichinose, the voice actress of Suleta and Eric. If you want to listen to it, I will have the video linked down below, and I will also have the written version of the English version there, so you can in a way provide your own English subtitles, because the video itself is not subtitled. And not only is it an audio version, but it also comes complete with some really adorable visuals, so again, I highly recommend you to go check it out. However, as cool as this news is, there is also a darker side to this. Because when you think about the theory of the Ariel being airy, the novel is seen through the eyes of the Gundam Ariel, and it is now being officially read by Ari's voice actress. Did they do this because Kana Ichinose is the most obvious choice to read the official novel of the series because she is the voice actress of the main character? Probably. Um, but there is still that dark shadow of possibility looming over the story. So quickly moving on to something much more lighthearted. The Gundam Metaverse's AI, who is called Mello, has made her VTuber debut on YouTube in the form of Gunpla quizzes. And there were some good and some bad things about those quizzes. What is without a doubt great about them is that the entire live stream is subtitled in English. Going from what Mello is saying to the questions of the quiz and the translations were also on point except for the instructions on how to participate in the quiz. I am correct in the comment section. The turn of choices that I think is good, put in the issue. Somehow, type in the number of the answer you think is correct in the chat became that mess. Still, even for the people who don't know any Japanese, there is absolutely no language barrier until you jump into the chat because that is absolutely filled with only Japanese. Uh, potentially because the event, well, the live stream was less advertised in English. But there are still some live streams planned, so if you want to check out the official Gundam VTuber, who's not officially called a VTuber but an AI, um, there will be links down below. Now, uh, because everything was subtitled, the stream did feel more scripted. Even the points where she was interacting with the public still had a very scripted feel, as in they anticipated what the audience would say and they already had an answer ready to go. Something that I noticed that could be fixed then were her mouth movements. More often than not, they weren't synchronized and the mouth would even continue to move after she was done talking, really reminding me of those like old badly dubbed kung fu movies. It does have a charm of its own, but with how advanced VTuber models have become, it does stand out as a bit low tech for a company such as Bandai. And finally, one interesting question that I saw popping up quite a bit in the chat is that if she's actually an AI, because the way she's speaking doesn't completely feel like an AI, but it also doesn't completely not feel like an AI, and then you have the whole scripted thing, and the fact with how far technology has come, I also really do wonder how much of this is just roleplay and how much of this is actually everything being AI generated. And sticking with YouTube, there's a bit of a situation that we're having on the channel. A situation that unfortunately is not limited to this channel. The message me on Telegram impersonators, whether you see them on my channel or on someone else's channel, do not 
under any circumstances engage with these accounts. I mean, sure, if you're just chatting on YouTube, that's not a problem, but do not go to the Telegram they're advertising. Instead, if you do see them, feel free to message me on my socials that are linked on my official YouTube page. Um, just as I said with the um, SD Gundam giveaway, I do not have any secret accounts that I will message you on to give you something if you just pay me a little fee. That's not how that works. Um, and if one of my main accounts does contact you with that, it has been hacked. So do not, do not engage with my official accounts under those circumstances either. Um, so uh, the problem with these scammers is that they are actually more smart compared to other scams. Because when you leave a comment, I get a notification of that, making it pretty easy for me to delete regular scam that is just commented on my videos. However, when you respond to a comment, I do not get a notification of that. On top of that, they typically target videos that have been up for either a few hours and sometimes even a few days making it much harder for me to actually find these comments in older videos. This then really makes me wonder how hard it could be for YouTube to implement a system that pings a content creator or gives some kind of notification when someone posts the same message a hundred times on one video who also just happens to have part of their username the same as the username of the account that created the video that they're posting on. But hey, I guess they do have more important things to do, like deleting the dislike button, supposedly for the mental health of content creators. So yeah, on the gaming front, in Gundam Battle Operation 2, the high boost gym rushes onto the scene. In Gundam Breaker Mobile, the dawn of mass production event has become available. UC Engage has been grazed by Yu Kajima and the Blue Destiny Unit 1, as well as the full armor Engage Gundam C plan, and of course, some gacha events. And today, Gundam Evolve will be getting the mission briefing for Season 2. Although, by the time that this video is edited and uploaded, the live stream should already be live, so you can check that out through the link down below. At the moment that I'm recording, it's not live yet, so I don't know anything about what they're saying in that yet. Um, in other news then, the Japanese Gunpla Builders World Cup Finals will be live streamed on November 19th, link also down below. The Kukuru's the Wands Island X Gundam Factory Yokohama collaboration kicked off on the 12th. On the 19th, the 10th Manhole Summit will be held in uh, Tokorozawa, featuring Amuro and Char manholes from the origin. And as part of the Sunrise Festival, it has been decided that over at the Shinjuku Piccadilly Cinema, the Zeta Gundam movie trilogy will be screened on January 28th, and the Turn A and Riken Gista in G movies on the 29th. As for the things you could get this week then, last week Friday the 7-Eleven limited entry grade new Gundam, entry grade stride Gundam with beam rifle and shield, and high grade Gundam Lafrith went up for sale, of course in 7-Eleven locations across Japan, as well as the Gundam Kara Poke, short for character pocket tissues. As you've guessed, these are pocket tissues with a Gundam themed packaging that also include a Gundam sticker. One package goes for 165 yen, a little over 1 US, and comes with two regular sized tissues and one of 20 random stickers. 17 are normal and they feel kinda Polaroid inspired, which I think is a really cool aesthetic, and three are rare sparkling stickers. The packaging then comes in five types, Xeon, Federation, Zaft, Amuro or Holder, and right now they're only available in 7-Elevens, but at a later date they will be sold in other stores across Japan. And if you want more stickers, on the same day they also started selling the Witch from Mercury Square sticker set. 
you can get a pack of three in either a regular store for 220 yen, a dollar fifty, or a gachapon machine for only 200 yen, slightly less than a dollar fifty. And there are a total of 48 different stickers to collect. Or if cards are more your thing, you can collect 50 Witch from Mercury Cardass cards that are sold in booster packs of 5 for 275 yen to US. One day later then, you could gotcha for the Exceed model Zeta Head 2. Featuring the more anime accurate regular Zeta Head version 2, the Zeta Plus C1 and the Zeta Plus A1 test color version. They go for 500 yen or 4 US a spin. From Monday on then, 143 yen, 1 US gets you one package of the 8th set of Gumpla Box Art Collection Chocolate Wafers. Each package contains one wafer and a randomly packed box art card featuring a variety of different model kit lines and mobile suits. The highlights being the Witch from Mercury and Hathaway's Flash. Then on Wednesday you could get the Witch from Mercury opening theme sheet music for 605 yen each, 5 US, and it is available in two types, piano and vocals or just piano solo. Or you could get a Flash Gundam circuit board art iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max case for 17,600 yen or 126 US. The available designs are RX-78-2, Shars, Zaku-2, The Last Shooting and Unicorn Gundam. And the cool thing about these cases is that they have a light up function that is powered purely by the radio waves emitted by your phone. And today we got the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam for a whopping 15,400 yen, 111 US. And the question that I'm sure will be on everyone's mind is, is it worth it? Because over 15,000 yen for a standard sized Master Grade is no small price to pay, especially not when compared to previous Master Grade Extremes or previous Strike Freedom model kits. And that is without touching upon the elephant in the room. How is the gold going to be? In some images that I've seen it all looks really good, but in some other images I've seen, improvements could have been made. Heck, in the release statement, they're actually kind of brushing over the gold and instead focusing on the movable frame and the sliding armor gimmicks. So, yeah. Moving on to this week's reading material then, there was the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized and Gundam Ace has launched the Witch from Mercury Fair, which involves you getting a free bookmark none of which are Witch from Mercury themed, when you buy one of the Target mangas in a Japanese bookstore. None of which are Witch from Mercury themed. Of course, because there aren't any yet, but still. Um, in all seriousness, I would actually go for the around 30 OL Haman Sama bookmark or the two girls in love with high grade bookmarks. I actually picked up the high grade manga while I was in Japan and I totally fell in love with it. It so deserves an English translation, but, well, an official English translation, but I doubt we will ever get that. Um, and it is once again time for a Gundam Cafe segment. This time it isn't THE Gundam Cafe, but instead a Gundam Collaboration Cafe that opens up in Hirakata Park as part of the Gundam World Contrast in Osaka. The Collaboration Cafe will last from November the 19th until January the 9th and will be selling various Gundam themed drinks that will come with a random coaster. There's Kira Yamato's Jelly Soda, Omro Ray's Craft Cola and a latte with one of eight designs. Kira, Atherin, Diarka, Isaac, Nickel, Omro, Shar and Garma. And the possible coasters are Kira, Lacus, Atherin, Diarka, Isaac, Rao, Nickel, Omro, Shar, Sela, Lala, and Garma, each with their signature machine. 
And together with this, they also announced a new item that went up for sale over at the contrast thingy. For 1,320 yen a piece, 9 US, you can get one of six car signs with various messages. Uh, two are simply baby in car with SD characters on it. One is the freedom's eyes activating with the warning that you have a drive recorder. Um, there's one where Kira activates seed, but you can't really read the whole thing. It's something about being in serious mode and safety. Then we've got a Char Aznable one that actually isn't about going three times as fast, but instead it says that even the Red Comet obeys the speed limit. But finally, my favorite is a picture of when Omro first got into the Gundam with the warning that the driver is a paper driver, which is an awesome Japanese term for someone who does have a driver's license officially, as in they have a driver's license on paper, but they use the car so rarely that their driving either really sucks or they've like forgotten a lot of things they had to learn in order to get their license. So a very fair warning to give to people driving behind you. And with that, it is finally time to have a look at this week's Gundam Apparel. Starting off with Strict G, they released their B3 fly jackets in collaboration with Alpha Industries. For 39,600 yen, 284 US, you can either get one in Xeon Brown or Red Comet Black. And my biggest question is, what happened to the model's hair? Over at Bankore then, they also started last week Friday with pre-orders for their Haman Khan collection. Featuring a variety of items with both everyone's favorite female Gundam villain and her famous personal machine. You can get a jacket for 11,000 yen, 79 US, a hoodie for 8,250 yen, 59 US, two types of t-shirt for 3,520 yen a piece, 25 US, two types of tote bag for 2,750 yen a piece, 20 US, two types of bath towel for 4,400 yen a piece, 32 US, and a pouch for 1,430 yen, 10 US. And all of these Haman inspired items will be shipping out in December. And if you prefer her ex-boyfriend, then you can get the leather item collection Char's Silver Emblem version. Featuring a variety of leather items with a silver Char emblem on the outside and a red Char design on the inside. There's a long wallet for 19,800 yen, 142 US, a bifold wallet for 15,400 yen, 111 US, a business card case for 9,900 yen, 71 US, a pass and key case for 12,100 yen, 87 US, and a belt for 15,400 yen, 111 US again. Meaning that if you have exactly 111 US to spare, you can choose between either a Char Bifold Wallet, a Char Belt, or a Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. Let me know down below which one you think is the best option. And from the same series, you could also pre-order the Celestial Being versions one day later. But there is no belt, and they are slightly more expensive. The long wallet goes for 20,900 yen, 150 US, the bifold wallet goes for 18,700 yen, 135 US. The business card case goes for 11,000 yen, 79 US. And finally, it's not a pass and key case, but just a pass case. And it also goes for 11,000 yen, 79 US. Whichever one of the two designs you go for though, they are both slated for a March release. And then let's wrap up this week's Gundam news with the results of a poll that we had a look at last week. With the release of the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam, Gundam.info wanted to know what our favorite weapon of the Strike Freedom is. But perhaps the real question should have been, what is the second most popular weapon of the Strike Freedom? because people were very unanimous about the number one spot. With 56.2%, the Super Dragoons managed to get more votes 
than all of the other options combined. And why wouldn't they? They're very powerful weapons and they also create quite the spectacle when they launch. In second place then, with 17%, we have the two high energy beam rifles. And again, just as with the Dragoons, well, Super Dragoons, they aren't just powerful weapons, but they also have some showmanship, with their combination being prominently featured in the opening. And in third place, we have a weapon that I am personally quite fond of, the Xiphios 3 Railguns with 14.9%. There's just something about hip-mounted railguns that I really like, both aesthetically and practically. And yes, this is definitely one of the reasons why I have a soft spot for the Gwaze R. And in last place then, we have the Calidus Multi-Phase Beam Cannon with 11.9%. Now, wouldn't it have been funny if they'd also included the 31mm SeaWiz guns in the poll? But that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.